Hello there, my name is Brent. That is the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo. And this is a video I've been wanting to make for almost a year now. Just under a year ago, this town lost the American Hotel. It was a beautiful building built 149 years ago that was the crown jewel of this entire place. And since then, rebuilding the American Hotel has become my obsession, my white whale, my thing I think about from sun up till sundown. And in the process of that, I've run into a lot of challenges. The biggest of which has been concrete. Turns out getting concrete to 8,500 feet at the end of a seven and a half mile dirt road, hours from any supplier is very difficult. But I am very happy to announce the concrete issue has been solved and the rebuilding of the American Hotel has officially begun. All right, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know that for the past six months, the bane of my existence has been concrete. Specifically, how to get 90 yards of concrete, so imagine about 10 full truckloads, up a seven mile dirt road here to Cerro Gordo, California. And why do I need concrete? Because I am trying to rebuild the American Hotel. And the American Hotel has been my white whale, you know, my driving force every single day, almost for the past year now. And when I started on it, everything seemed easy. You know, you build a hotel, how hard could it be? Well, it can be really hard, especially when nobody will bring concrete to your town. So over the past six to seven months, I've been pulled in every direction, promised everything from every local company and every contractor that says that they can get concrete up here until the rubber meets the dirt in this situation and they don't deliver. And so for the past seven months, I've been jerked around in all directions. And during that time, there started to be whispers of this mythical human being that could potentially solve my problems named Heavy D. And at first they were just YouTube comments, and they were Instagram comments, and then there was more. And then Mr. Dave Sparks and I connected. And I remember talking to Dave at first and we talked about things that he could help out with here at Cerro Gordo. I know this guy has a huge heart and he likes to help people. And when I started talking, I was like, well, maybe we can get these ore carts or, you know, we can restore this cab or, you know, I do have this massive 90 yard concrete problem. And I remember Dave is kind of zeroing in on it. And so before I go any further than this video, I have to give the biggest shout out in the world to Dave Sparks. You know, I've almost never in my life met somebody as genuine and generous and just solid human being as Dave. And if you like this channel and you like what's going on up here, I hope you go over to Dave's channel and show him some love, you know, let him know how much I appreciate him solving this issue for me. Because really, this video wouldn't be happening without Dave. Well, I think we got Mr. Heavy D Dave Sparks coming to town to take a look at our concrete situation. The boys are coming. Thank you guys so much for being here. Dude, thanks for having us. This place is unbeatable and it's so much better in person. I think it is. Yeah. Listen, now that I've come and I've seen and I've, I've experienced, I got some ideas on how we can help. Okay. Well, the viewers of this channel have been looking for concrete for a very long time. So, uh, so the viewers, first of all, you guys, thank you for the introduction here. Yes. Well, I wasn't familiar with the channel. I'd seen bits and pieces, but I didn't realize that there was really a crazy guy up here living. <laughs> so guys, we are, uh, we're going to figure out the concrete. And I've told uh, my friend here that we're going to have that done very soon. In fact, the deadline that I've set is before June 15th. We want to have the concrete here. We're going to get trucked up the canyon for them and get the American Hotel right back on track so that you guys can come experience this insane place. Here they come. Just a few days ago, a National Guard worth of machinery showed up at the bottom of this hill, headed by Heavy D. Not only the biggest equipment I've ever seen at Cerro Gordo, but some of the biggest equipment I've seen anywhere. We had an excavator, we have a loader here, we have two military trucks, there's a camper van, there's a skid steer, there's a couple of flatbeds, a low boy, all sorts of stuff all to help out Cerro Gordo. And it's just 
it's it's almost overwhelming. You know, the amount of support that Dave's shown for this for this town. And he arrived with the intention of pouring concrete. And I worked every day up until his arrival to get ready to pour concrete. If you look down at the hotel site, you will see the architect, rebar guy, engineer, and more, because today the construction of the American Hotel finally begins. I'm bringing this down to start digging in some of the footings. Progress on the American Hotel is finally about to begin. The American Hotel was originally built in 1871. It was a dream of this Englishman named John Simpson and his wife. And when it opened, the hotel was known as the finest hotel east of the Sierras. It hosted all sorts of esteemed guests from all over the country, a who's who of Western mining history. There's even stories of Butch Cassidy hiding out there for a while. And I wonder often about all the struggles Simpson went through building that hotel. You know, he didn't have big excavators or backhoes or five ton trucks to help get things up the mountain. He had mules and manpower. You know, he was dealing with a town that had no laws, a murder per week and every type of corruption, but he still pulled it off. You know, he opened a hotel on the top of a mountain in the middle of a mining town. You know, I can only imagine how excited and proud he must have been to announce the hotel's opening in 1871. And I don't think he could have imagined that 150 years later, that hotel would be known to millions of people all over the world, or that there would be this monumental task of rebuilding it with the hopes of that hotel's legacy living on for hundreds of more years. All right, I'm taking a little break. I was putting on some sunscreen because we're out there, but I gotta say like, <coughs> this is probably, I don't know, my most exciting day ever at Cerro Gordo. You know, this seems like it's been so long coming. And today I walk out there and there's just a crew lasering off where the rebar's gonna go. There's a crew denailing the two by fours we need to use for the forms. And it's just like, there's progress. And for the first time, it actually seems like this hotel is going back up. You know, obviously I believe it from day one, but with all these issues with concrete, it was just long. And so like, I almost had to come up here to catch my breath, not necessarily just from the work, but just kind of the excitement and kind of uh, the support, you know, it just seems amazing to see out there. There's guys that are clearing their weekend to come up here to help. And while I'm doing that, you know, people are stopping by and just kind of, you know, encouraging me on and everybody that just watches this channel, you know, thank you all so much. It's just feel, an overwhelming amount of gratitude right now for everything that's going on. And so I just wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, it's happening. It's actually going down. Spence actually getting poured. And uh, this hotel is going to get done. <laughs> but for me, I need to get back out there. You know, I need to just drink some more water. I have red hair, so I put sunscreen a lot. And uh, just out this window, I once saw the most tragic night of my life when uh, I saw the hotel in flames and I'm hoping to see one of the happiest moments of my life when I see this thing come back to life. Losing the American Hotel was probably the hardest day of my life. You know, it's difficult to even recount it almost a year later. You know, I remember sitting right here just distraught at, you know, what I had just seen because it's almost impossible to describe what it's like to see your hopes, your dreams, your life savings, the centerpiece of this place you love so much go up in flames. I was very aware even in the moment that history was being lost. You know, this store is a great time capsule of the different history around Cerro Gordo, but the hotel was history itself. You know, that's something that can never be replaced. And all that weight was just hitting me. I remember as I was sitting there, just feeling the most useless I've ever felt in my life when I was just trying to throw five gallon buckets 
on a flame that was 50 feet tall. I just remember crying, not believing that was even happening. I remember pinching myself and just wondering why. And you know, your mind jumps to all sorts of things. Maybe it was somebody did this to me or what could have gone differently. And I heard the first few days after the fire, I didn't really want to be here, but I didn't want to be anywhere else. And I remember for me, there was a turning point. I remember in the morning, just being totally exhausted, distraught, looking at the flames still smoldering in the embers. And the old owner of Cerro Gordo came up here, you know, and he was both the only and the last person I wanted to see. You know, I felt in some way I'd let him down and then he was coming up to yell at me or lecture me in different ways. And I remember he came and he put his, <laughs> uh, it's a difficult moment for me to even recount, you know, a year later, he came, he put his hand on my shoulder and when I was expecting him to yell, he just said, this is what's supposed to happen. You know, for better or worse, this is what it is. This wasn't your fault, you know, but it's up to you what happens next. And those words really rung true to me in the moment, you know, it was like, what happens from here is on me. And I internalized that as what I had to do. You know, I've spent the last 12 months thinking, focusing, almost obsessing on the American Hotel every day since then. You know, though I only work on other projects when I can't be working on the hotel. It just became much more than me. You know, it wasn't just about my experience here, it was about the people who have been here before his experience here and the people that will come here afterward, their experience here. And so for me, there wasn't a question of whether the hotel was gonna go back up. It was just what I could do to get it done. And all along the way over the past 12 months, there's been roadblocks from vendors, county, partners, all sorts of things that have made this more difficult, but we're almost there. Day two, you know, the rebar started going in. So separately, I coordinated a rebar crew out of LA to come, set the rebar, tie the rebar, and get this thing ready to pour. So after the trenches were dug, you know, Dave was still around and Dave is a guy uh, that does not like to sit still. He's like, what other dirt work you got? And so started listing stuff, you know, well, we got this pad up by the hoist house that I would love to get cleared. I remember not even thinking about it. And then just hearing the excavator going up by the hoist and you look up and Dave is just at the edge of this cliff, just about teetering over the edge, swinging around like a madman without any care in the world, you know, just grinning ear to ear. This man just loves operating heavy machinery. And he cleaned up that, and then we came back down and said, what else we got? And then we got into a little bit of exploration. So, well, you know, since you're here, there are these mine shafts that I would love to get into. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that getting into mines is really important to me. You know, it's probably one of my favorite things to do, not just because the adventure end of it, but because of the history attached. You know, to me, exploring mines is better understanding Cerro Gordo's history. You know, it's piecing together context to items, and context is so important. So like, right here, this is an old blasting room door. So back in the day, they used to use dynamite to open up all the mines. This door came out of a mine that Dave and I opened up this weekend. But now it's here, you know, now it's in the museum, and now when people come, I can tell them where it came from, what it was used for, and can provide that context to all the items here in the museum. And that's why I go in there for, to, to piece together the history of Cerro Gordo, to better understand the lives of these miners that would go back there and work day after day. Because the lives of every miner in every different tunnel is different. Getting back into each of these tunnels allows me to experience that history in a more firsthand way. So when Dave started wanting to dig into mines, Obviously I was game, you know, it's something that I, I love to do. I spent six months trying to dig into the Omega Tunnel here at Cerro Gordo. So when he said point, I started pointing. And then there was this little cribbing or like old rock below the new town line. So below the shaft that I had descended down into, I remember looking down and there was some cribbing and it was obvious that once upon a time they're bringing ore on the mountain. But these days it pretty much just looked like mountain, you know, outside of the track sticking out, you could have just walked right by it and never knew. 
And I was like, you know what? I think there's one down there, but I remember telling Dave, you know, I just don't think you can get to it because the terrain to get there is just steep side hill, shale, hard to get to even on a dirt bike, much less an 80,000 pound excavator or something crazy like this. I thought Dave had kind of, you know, decided against it. And then maybe an hour passed, I was like, you know, where's Dave? And I started thinking, I was like, I bet he's back at that mine. Sure enough, I get there's a time seeing Dave turn on the excavator, smiling like a madman, just caked in dust. You know, the dustiest human being I've ever seen in my life, just having the time of his life. I remember he's looking at me and be like, we're close. This is a thing that an hour ago just looked like a wall of sand. Now it's an open mine shaft. What are you thinking? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. You're looking great. You're looking a little dusty. I'm feeling adventurous and dusty. All right, so I tried to fill people in. Well, first of all, it started off as we almost didn't dig here. And then uh, I got bored and decided to, to scratch one more hole. And dude, that is nuts. It goes up and it goes down further than we could see. So we're to the point where we need ropes. Got ropes. Got ropes. We need helmets. We got helmets. Yep. Got gear. Uh, a lot of fresh air in there, so I'm not too concerned about the air quality. But man, that is, it's big. It's a serious mine. I'm it's a excited. Mine. Like an hour ago, this is like an unassuming wall of sand. It looked like it, I mean, and the tailings pile was small enough where you thought, oh, maybe they went in a couple hundred feet and then just backed out. No. Yeah. This goes into a serious system. Yep. Ladders, like uh, all sorts of different like strategies that they, they 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 were like stoping through there, and it looks like they followed something that went up like that. So, and I remember Dave and I kind of looked at each other. You know, the excitement built up, and we went in. Broken another mine. Yeah. Man, we're going back there. Right? Yeah, probably used to have a door on them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing the harness rope. Yeah. Just because I don't want to trust that ladder. It's 40 a 50 feet, feet yeah. probably of rickety ladder. Okay. Um, they've done a good job torn it up. Yeah. Like a lot of this stuff. Yep. But uh, I'm pretty sure it goes down, cuts left, and there's another level down there. <sighs> there's just, there's veins of stuff all through here. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's some Galena right here. So this is what they're mining. That's Galena for sure. So that like silver. Yeah, lead. that's what I'm saying. That's the big bam right there. Yeah, so that's silver lead. That's what they're mining. Should I tell Bud to get a pick? Yeah, tell Bud to get a pick. Oh yeah, it opens. It opens up up there? Yeah. And I see ladders up here too. Oh damn. <laughs> the fun continues. <laughs> Rock climbing? Mm -hmm. All right. Dude, he just goes and goes. I see and that. Goes. You can be on that platform. Yeah. How the shit had to climb this on that basis? <laughs> what did they I'm walk off right there? I'm wondering if they had like a ladder, you know, it's rotted out or something. There's. See that rock wall right there? Yeah. Something behind it? Yeah, they, they, I mean, that's intentional. Yep. What do you think, having fun? Dude, <laughs> dude, this is, this is the best. The coolest, look at that, dude. That's crazy. You go straight up as far as the flashlight will go. Yeah. And there's all these little different platforms. So crazy. And we could easily rock climb that right there. Yep. So when they couldn't use ore carts, they'd have ore bags. So there's an ore, ore bag. You drag it out. Yeah. Talk about tough life. Oh, Another old sack. Makes you wonder what kind of shit they buried behind these backdrops. Exactly. Anything they didn't want to take out. Right. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, like that. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, how? Do, where are you guys? Like, yeah, okay. Uh, tunnel pops. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of rock in there. Alright, I guess that's our cue. I was hanging out down here waiting for the all clear to come up up the ladder, and then 
Right at the entrance, a bunch of rocks fall down. Davis scurries out of the mine. He's like, I'd get out of there if I could. That's our cue. The uncovered mine is about to be covered. <laughs> Great. Look at this dead fox. Why that dead fox got in there? I gotta get out of here before this mine collapses. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Let me go back, get some gear, we'll come back, and we're gonna do a proper exploration. This is towards the end of the day. You know, this is probably five, six o'clock at night. So we've been working all day, we're tired, but just that enthusiasm and like excitement of what could potentially be there remain. And so I said, you know what? We gotta go for this. So we came back here, we wrangled the crew, Diesel, Dave, Heavy D, Jax, a whole bunch of guys from his team came with us. We went back to this mine to explore. Down or up, right? down. I like that down area. Did you guys go this area? Yep. Yeah. So we're headed down in the belly. Belly of the beast. Totally. You going down there, Jax? Uh, I'm not waiting. Give me a. Huh? <laughs> you waiting? You huh? got this? Up oh, next. Man, how far down is it, you think? I think that ladder goes down from the vertical ladder down there. Uh -huh. At the end of this one, goes probably 50 feet or so. Oh, shit. So in Cerogor's heyday, what they would mine is called galena. It kind of looks like this. And so what it is, it's a silver lead ore. So it's very heavy when you see it, but it's also very sparkly. And so as we were going down the shaft, you could just see the veins that they left behind. You know, they're obviously following this body of ore that looks kind of like this. But at the time, they didn't have the tools or the patience to carve out little sections if they were hauling out tons and tons of this stuff. So that made me think, you know, this was a serious fine back in the day. What do they do with Just make, they get the silver out of it? Yeah, they can melt the silver and the lead. And then, uh, that's the main thing they were mining at Cerro Gordo was this Galena, exactly that stuff. It's as pure as could be, right? That's what they call high grade. Yeah. Pure what? Comfy? Easy. All right, so you see we're good to tie off to? I mean, there's just beans on it. Are we gonna trust? I'm guessing the base of one of these timbers? Yeah. So did Davis and Alec not come down? Uh, Alec tried to Well, we got the GoPro, but we won't have them come any further than a couple of weeks. Yeah, Jesus. Got it. So they, they see that, that piece of rock? Chunk there? Yeah, exactly. Yep. That piece is like a loop. Oh, is it? Yeah. Nice. How long a vertical is that? Uh, um, it's like it, the ladder goes down maybe 30 feet, but then it like tapers out. I remember we went down the rickety kind of incline to the point where it dropped straight vertically about 50 feet. Dave was already there. We tied off the rope and he just kind of Tarzan down, you know, one arm on a rope, one arm kind of lowering him down, all the way down, got down, yelled up, hey, I think this is where it stops. And unfortunately that first ladder down was a dead end, you know, that's where it ended. But I remember on the way back up, he said that sitting on the ladder was this giant piece of galena that some person that had probably been trying to get out of there, couldn't carry all the way up, but left there. And Dave just being on one arm, already pulling himself up, also couldn't take it. So that's another adventure for another day. We weren't done yet. 
You know, just because the first ladder down led almost nowhere, that didn't mean that there wasn't that ladder back up. I remember on my way up, he said, hey, I think there's an exit to the outside. I've been at Cerro Gordo for a very long time. I've explored these hills extensively. And if there's an exit to the outside of a mine, I've been into that mine, or so I thought. And I got up the top and sure enough, take a left, take another left, you're outside again. Ha! Huh. That's funny, look at that. Oh, just came up here. That's an entrance to the mine. And so that was the day. You know, I gotta say, it was some of my best times up here at Cerro Gordo. And the good news is, we're just about there. The rebar is now set. Everything is ready for the official concrete pour. And this has been a day that I've been looking forward to for, well, a year. You know, it's been just about one year to the date is when we'll be pouring. The American Hotel burned down June 15th, 2020. And I think we'll be pouring just around June 15th, 2021. And that's special to me. You know, this is a project that means a lot. I remember when I bought Cerro Gordo, I was looking for that challenge, you know, that thing to bring out all of me that would test me intellectually, spiritually, like emotionally, just take everything from me. And Cerro Gordo has done that. You know, it's taken a lot from me emotionally, financially, physically, you know, I'm just drained being here, but I love it. You know, it truly calls all of me. And this hotel project has been the hardest project of my life. You know, it's one that I never anticipated doing. You know, rebuilding the hotel was never part of the Cerro Gordo plan but it's part of Star Wars history now, and I'm gonna make my way through it. All right, it's 5 a.m. And today's mission is to head down the hill and meet the concrete bags that are coming. But we're gonna be bringing them up on the three-ton military trucks. So it's gonna take, oh, 20 runs to get it up here. Down in Keeler, waiting on that concrete to show up. But look at the sun over Keeler. I never really see sunrises down here. It's pretty beautiful. All right, so they're up with the very first load of concrete bags. It's game day. Today's the day. Just after five o'clock in the morning. I gotta go down to meet the concrete rep for the final delivery. 9 a.m., inspector arrives. Hopefully he gives us a thumbs up on this. When we pour right afterwards and the construction of the American Hotel officially begins. You know, to get the concrete done up here, this is where we ended up. Dave brought up a massive concrete mixer truck. This thing had like eight wheels on it or 16 wheels or something crazy and what we used were quick crete super sacks. So these are nylon sacks that hold an entire yard of concrete. They're 3,000 pounds each, and we had 80 of them. So whatever 80 times 3,000 is, what 240,000 pounds of concrete had to be moved from Keeler up here. <laughs> and then we had them sitting there, and then to make actual concrete, you need water. And so the system that we ended up going with is we had 250 gallon cubes that we would hoist up with the excavator, position perfectly over the concrete truck, empty into the concrete truck. Then after one of those was in, we would go over, grab one of these nylon sacks, these 3000 pound bags of concrete, lift that up with the excavator, position that perfectly over the concrete truck. And then underneath it, there's a little spout that's held by a little bit of twine. So you undo that, concrete starts rushing out, just getting anybody in the way extraordinarily dusty. That goes into the truck, more water, mix it up, and then you can kind of take this truck, bring it over to the work site, 
position it over the footings, and pour. It was just a beautiful day, you know, we just kept rocking them. You know, it took about 45 minutes each time to reload the truck with 10 yards of concrete. But in between that time, we had a whole crew out there just leveling out the concrete, doing this, doing that. And it almost felt beautiful. You know, there was a synchronization happening between all these parties, all towards one common goal. And given everything that could go wrong, the day went amazingly, you know, it went off pretty smoothly. We just kept cranking, kept pouring concrete, kept leveling it. You know, I remember looking at everyone and we all were just so dusty and so dirty, but so energized towards this kind of common goal of getting these footings done. And we did it, you know, we started maybe around 10 a.m. after I got the thumbs up. And then around 9 p.m. as the sun was setting, it, we were just getting down to it and we finished. You know, we pulled it off. So I just have to give a shout out to Heavy D, Dave Sparks, Diesel Dave, their whole crew, all the volunteers here from Cerro Gordo, you know, the guys from the concrete company that helped, and everybody watching this channel. You know, everybody came together and we pulled it off. We pulled off this goal that I had been told for months was impossible to do. And it just makes me so excited, not just about what was done, but What's to come, you know, Cerro Gordo's future. I, I think this was the first piece that needed to fall into place. And I just hope this momentum carries over into the rest of this construction project and we can just get this hotel rebuilt. You know, it's energized me. After eight months of banging my head, I was starting to get a little bit fatigued. Uh, it might be showing, but I'm pumped up again. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to keep this project going, get this hotel back online, and hopefully have a lot of you guys come up here and stay in it. You know, it's it's it was truly a monumental day in Cerro Gordo's history. You know, this is the most concrete that's ever been poured at Cerro Gordo, and it's going towards the rebuilding of a hotel that I hope stands for hundreds of years. And so it wasn't lost on me, you know, the importance of this day, not just in my life, but hopefully in the history of Cerro Gordo was big to me. You know, it was a day that I really enjoyed. And uh, I think it's one of the most rewarding days of my entire life. And so I thank everybody that came out and helped out. I thank all of you guys for following along in this channel. And I just have to say, it's incredible when I think about it, that this hotel, this town is being rebuilt with the help of YouTube, you know? It's interesting if you think about the timeline over a long enough period, Cerro Gordo's history will have to include a chapter about this channel, about YouTube, you know, and how all of you guys helped rally together to rebuild this town. I think that's cool. You know, there's something really intriguing about that. And so I just wanna say thank you all so, so much. You are playing a part in bringing this town back to life. And I, I mean, I literally couldn't do it without this channel. So th thank you all so, so much. There's a lot more exciting things to come. You know, I'm gonna keep cranking on construction here. We have other cabins going on. There's a mine exploration that I'm getting into next week and all sorts of other stuff. So if you aren't already, please subscribe to this channel. It's free. There's a lot of fun things going on up here. I hope you guys follow along over the next year or years as this town comes back to life. Until then, I hope you guys have an amazing week. I hope you guys make progress on whatever you're working on. And until then, I'm signing out. I'll see you guys next time.